Hello, everybody, and welcome to Beefcake number 25. I want to start out with something that's been bothering me a little bit. You all are aware that I have my co-host, Vaughn Rawls, who is also a, a close friend of mine. Upon entering Lift Heavy, Run Long, part of that decision was based on the my feelings towards the community and my love for the, the trail and running community and weightlifting and CrossFit community. And, and the other part was because Vaughn had done such a good job of establishing this community. But it, it seems as if there's quite a few people who aren't as fond of Vaughn as maybe I once thought. And, and they're lining up, they're coming in droves to express their dissatisfaction. And while I'm unaware with the problems of the past, uh, we're going to start to to get down to the bottom uh, of these things. And uh, a friend of mine came in earlier to to talk to us about his feelings for Vaughn Rawls, and that was Mr. Dusty Rhodes. Go ahead, Mr. Rhodes. First of all, I would like to thank the many, many fans throughout this country that wrote cards and letters to Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, while I was down. I don't have to say a lot more. No respect. No honor. He put... Hard times on Dusty Rhodes and his family. And he's talking about hard times. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy. You put hard times on this country by taking Dusty Rhodes out. That's hard times. Hard times Mr. Rawls placed him under his family as well. I admit I don't look like the athlete of the day supposed to look. My belly's just a little big. My hand is just a little big. But, brother, I am bad, and they know I'm bad. And speaking of Von Rawls, here he is, unfazed. He's got a leather hat and an alligator on a leash. Yes, here comes Amos. Amos Moses was a Cajun. He lived by himself in the swamp. He hunted alligator for living. Welcome, Mr. Von Rawls. Oh, I'll, I'll just never, I, I can never understand it. It won't. I'll never understand. You'll never get it. And you're in, you live in such denial that you have this, this history that exists. And you don't want to believe it, but it's there. I'm not in denial. You're something because Dusty Rhodes, the American dream. Which one is he? Very, which, very which, strong feel. Do not say which one is he. <laughs> we'll lose all listenership if you don't know who Dusty Rhodes is. You've got a long day in front of the Google machine, Mr. Uh, Rawls. <laughs> oh, boy. I have so many haters. It, it baffles me. But it's time to move forward. We have to put this behind us. For those of you who don't know, Vaughn has no idea what the segue, his introduction is going to be, and he can't even hear it played. <laughs> so we're totally winging this thing. And my goal is to make sure that Vaughn doesn't even know who these people are, who I'm, who I'm dubbing in there. I'm like, oh, God, please don't let it be another wrestler. <laughs> it's always got to be a wrestler. <laughs> I've got Channel 5 wrestlers. I've got Memphis Wrestling piled up for months <laughs> in my head, and I just can't uh, wait to get to it. This is great. Uh, Rock and Roll Express. The Rock and Roll Express. They may, they're, they're probably going to have to have a word or two to have with you. Yeah. Maybe not in the next episode, but in, in one coming up. Sure of that. Oh man, that's hilarious. What a way to start the day. Yeah. You could be, you could be looking at political posts and ranting and raving and being all upset about what's going on in the country, or you could uh -huh. be getting cursed out by the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Oh yeah. I like the latter better. Yeah. Do you do you know how to say the the former and latter? I always get confused. I know it makes me sound stupid, but like when people say you could do you could eat you could eat a candy bar or you could drink a glass of water. Which would you prefer? The former or the latter? The I would prefer the former. Which but is the I candy bar. I need to bar. do the latter because that's the later. That's the look only at, way look I at do that. that. Boom. But I say a lot of things that prior I've had a hard time using prior. Do you know what prior, prior means? Prior. Well, let's see. Prior. You have prior convictions. So before that, <laughs> prior to the investigation. Was, yes. Before I met you today, you've done some other things prior to meeting me. 
prior to entering into lift heavy run long, apparently you have really pissed some wrestlers off. You realize that you thought that I was a just a kind of gentle soul, but really I'm a monster. That's right. I, I learned the latter to be true. And I just cover it all up. Wow. We're learning some stuff, man. That's what we need to be doing <laughs> is like taking over the noggin show. That's all right. Cracking open those brains and letting the honesty come out. That's it. I got a little honesty for you in beefcake number 25. The, the title of it is self-manufactured misery. I went to dinner with my, my friend, my comrade. I go out to dinner with him on, on occasion and we went to Jason's deli and we ate at the, the food bar and we were discussing my propensity to obsess about things. Right. And as you know, I tend to do that. Uh, yes. Okay. And what I do is I take one thing and I make that my little world. And that one thing right now is my inability to understand audio on this podcast. <laughs> so I spend countless hours Googling and plugging in things and unplugging things and becoming frustrated on what it, about what it is that I don't understand. He was laughing at me listening to this because I don't, Vaughn, you're a guy that takes things as they come. Like, yes. let's, let's figure it out for this episode and then we're good. Uh huh. I, on the other hand, look at it as if it's a problem now, what are all the other potential problems that could come up with future episodes and let's solve them right. ahead of time. But they're not even really problems. It's like, not at all. We can we could still make a good podcast. You're just not doing it the way that you want to do it. That's correct. And that makes you frustrated. Makes me frustrated, which in turn makes me unhappy. I can see that. Gary made an excellent point when he said, and really what difference does it make when you won't be doing podcasts in a year anyway? You'll be off to something else. <laughs> and at first I thought, you son of a bitch. Why would you say something like that? And then I thought, well, he's probably right. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, I get on something, I wear it out, and then I I go do something else. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. A year from now, we'll revisit this. Yeah, and we'll be able to shove it in Gary's face. That's right. We'll be like, screw you, Gary. <laughs> I'll have him on the podcast tied up and speaking out of a gag. <laughs> what was it you said a year ago, Gary? Say it, say it, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> well, so so my concern is I, I get on this this podcast, which is nothing more than fun. You know, it's mm -hmm. something that we enjoy doing. We get a lot of laughs out of it, mm -hmm. and it should be all fun and games. But I have the tendency to to just turn it into to something that makes me unhappy versus something that that I enjoy doing. Uh huh. And the question that he posed to me was, is it causing you any pain? You know, is it causing you problems in your marriage? Is it causing you difficulty with your, uh, the relationship that you have with your children? Is it causing you real physical pain? And my answer was, no, it's not doing any of those things. He, he told me, he said, you're an intense person. Everything I know about you is highlighted or underlined with a degree of intensity Everything about your past is surrounded by intensity and everything I know about you now on some level is associated with intensity. He then said everything about you going forward will most likely be surrounded with intensity. It doesn't mean that I'm intense all the time. It just means that at my core, I've, I have a level of intensity and that's true. There's, there's no denying that. And what he was saying was, that's cool. Like, embrace that. Know that that's what I am. That mm -hmm. a, a tiger can't change its stripes, but it can work on becoming a better tiger. You know, All I right. can't change the fact that I'm an intense person, but I can, I can help to, to hone in some things and use my intensity more for my benefit and work on it so it doesn't create, you know, such a such self-manufactured misery. Right. You can decide what you spend that intensity on. Right. And I, I think that has, that says a lot about just kind of embracing 
who you are and who I am. We also sat there and, and laughed and laughed and laughed because he understands that. Because I think we all, to some degree, can relate to that, that thing that we are that we allow to let us be, be miserable. Mm-hmm. Whether it's your, your intensity, your lack of intensity, your really strong work ethic, or your obsessive nature, or your kind of ability to see things as being sad and empty all the time. <laughs> Which some people <laughs> treat that as a ta- talent. Right. I don't like that talent. So misery is not the same as pain. They're not mutually ex- exclusive. True. Define misery. Misery, I think, is just a state of unhappiness that you place yourself in with your, through your own emotions. I think misery is a place that you take yourself. And uh-huh. pain is something that you are brought to or is brought to you. Pain is delivered to your door, and misery you go shopping for. I think I think of pain as like something that hurts. Misery is like something. It's it's like a emotion. Misery is when you're allowing yourself to hurt. Right. Yeah. 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 You have a choice about it. Pain. You don't really like. If I, you don't have a choice. If I come up and punch you in the face. Right. That that's pain, and you didn't ask for it. You didn't create it. But misery, I feel like. That's your choice. Pain is you punching me in the face. Misery is me going home and being defeated and sad and depressed that you punched me in the face and worried about what everybody's going to think of me because you beat me up. Yes. Well done. So how's that for a definition? Very good. And my problem is very seldom pain. The threat of real pain is, is never around me pain that I'm not going to put myself through, whether it's going to be a workout or a run or something like that, where I control that level of pain to some degree, or at least I have a decision to make as to how much pain I'm going to place myself in. Uh huh. The misery part is something that I have control of as well, but I, I don't pay attention to it when I'm, when I'm creating it. It's hard to realize that you're doing stuff like that. I think. I get way down in, yeah. in my own head and don't brush things off the way that you brush things off, man. You, you, you are chill like that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you have a level of chill and a, and the ability to brush things off that come at you. That's true for the most part. And I think that some of what I'm talking about just has to do with the, the alcoholic mind. You know, I have uh-huh. a, I have the brain that is the same as a lot of people like me. So people like me can understand my inability to let things go and my uh, propensity to to grab onto things and and wrestle them until I'm deep and dark in a hole. Uh Uh-huh. And that's typical for alcoholics? It is. And that's why they, you you hear alcoholics say that the serenity prayer that says, you know, accept the things that I can't change. Ah, Change the things that I can and have the wisdom to know the difference Uh because I'll get on to the things that I can't change and get real busy trying to change those things. And that doesn't get me anywhere today being the the day after the uh, election. I think the serenity prayer would be helpful for just about everybody in the country. (laughs) I kind of brush, I brush that off for sure. I don't, I don't let that bother me. Do you have a political rant, a political statement you'd like to say to our hundreds of tens of listeners? No, I don't. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe you would slip out and say something maybe stupid. It's, it's kind of what I, I was hoping that you'd <laughs> rustle some feathers. Uh, I can rustle some feathers. So I went to bed last night before I knew who was going to win. I, I had a good idea about it. You know, obviously, everybody on TV that I was watching expected Hillary Clinton to win, and and so I kind of figured she was going to win. Never really thought that like Donald Trump when 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 they said Donald Trump was going to run for president, I was like, this is a joke. Like this can't be for real. This can't be real. The more, as it got closer and closer, you started to realize, wow, he's really got a chance to make this happen. You know, I didn't vote for either one of them. I did vote. I I kind of expected 
if he won, I expected him to get up on the stage and be like, uh, screw all you bastards. Like, say something crazy, you know? <laughs> like, look what I just did. I killed that bitch or whatever, you know? Like, something really un- like, I, out of this world I expected him to Smell say. Smell it, nerds. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, just like turn around and moon the whole country or something. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. I, I saw, like, I haven't seen the whole speech, but I watched his speech earlier this morning i saw a little bit of it and i was like wow that doesn't really sound too bad it's like hey man you know we it's time for us to come together and do all this i mean he didn't like go off on crazy train or anything so that's encouraging you know i mean i don't think i I, i'm trying to offer some comfort to everybody it's i don't think it's as bad as you make it out to be i think that uh i think one thing is for sure is that uh, people are no longer voting uh, their party lines, but in the past is like people would vote for like, uh, I'm a Democrat, so I'm gonna vote Democrat. I'm a Republican, so I have to vote Republican. Obviously, that's not true, right? <laughs> Anymore, like people will vote for whoever they want to vote for. I don't think I got. I don't think I was good enough to get a rise out of anybody. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think that people are. Some people are going to be disappointed. I think in the lack of fuel thrown on the fire Uh uh-huh yeah i think that probably what we're going to see is that there is a level of professionalism and everyone is going to try to work in a positive direction and there's going to be a lot of people who are disappointed in that yeah yeah people wanted fires and and fights and and chaos and craziness Right. That's that. Yeah. That's a very, very good way to put it. We woke up today. Uh, nothing is on fire. <laughs> right. So far, nobody's rioting and burning cities down. So I well, think not, it's just not in Bahia, yeah. Mississippi. Not on. Not on Pigeon Roost Road. They're not. Oh uh, well, no. That's yeah, true. Everybody around here is pretty happy. <laughs> um, but as a, is it a political? Am I a political? If I don't get involved, is that what that's called? Non political. I, I'll, um, I don't know. Non-political. I'm not very political. I don't know. Apolitical. I, th- I think it's it's going to be really great. I think it would have been really great if Hillary was elected. I think it's really great that Trump is elected, and I think that we're all going to gonna move forward and keep uh, trudging the road to a happy destiny. I haven't paid attention to politics in years, like back in the uh, late 90s early 2000s like I had a blog and I would, well, I would write political stuff every day I tried to defend Bush and all this kind of stuff and you had a blog where you would write political stuff every day yeah did you really <laughs> yeah I did you know I just kind of eventually got tired of it just gave up and so like for the last 10 years I've just been like I don't even care whatever and so now it's like my kind of piqued my interest to kind of start watching things again you know so hopefully that's true for a lot of people to where we haven't cared for so long but now oh uh shit we better start paying attention to what's going on around here <laughs> yeah i definitely feel more compelled to start paying a little bit more attention right and by paying attention i mean watching observing and seeing where i can change things and what i don't mean by that is getting into heated arguments with people that don't agree with me some sometimes I, I i don't do a very good job of walking the line between just remaining blissfully ignorant and hiding from reality uh-huh you know i don't need to know too much because there's not too much i can't change however i need to be in tune with what's going on in the world right and i think just hiding under a rock and pretending that everything going on doesn't exist that that's no more healthy than getting online and and bashing people that don't agree with how I see things. So we're learning. It's a work in progress. That's right. Speaking of progress, progress, lots of people are making progress with their deadlift. Yes, they are. Everyone Mm. seems to be really happy about it. Vaughn Rawls has, has come up with a three month deadlift program that you can buy at, www.liftheavyrunlong.com slash deadlift. You can get on yes. there and sign up for the three months. Right now, you can try it out for two weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. 
All you got to do is go to that, go to the site, liftheavyrunlong.com. Right there at the top of the page will be a place for you to put your email address, and I'll send you the form. I'll send you the two weeks. Let us know your progress. There's an option to have online coaching. Uh, there's videos and check-ins and everything that I believe that you need to know. And that was written by Vaughn, and uh, we're all really proud of it. Oh, I'm super proud of it. I put a lot of work into it. It was a lot of fun. And we also have our private Facebook group page that you can find on Facebook if you just enter in Lift Heavy Run Long. And Twitter and Instagram, at Lift Run Long. That's at Lift Run Long. Get on there. Shout out. Let us know what's going on. Give me some ideas for Vaughn's theme music, his intro music. Review us on yes. iTunes. And go to Reddit r slash lift heavy run long and get involved there and as always our music is by ted horrell and the monday night card so go to itunes type in ted horrell and the monday night card and download some good music sweet have a great day see ya